Hey everyone, welcome to yet another video. And in this one, we're gonna be starting off with some data structures implemented in JavaScript. So first of all, let's just look at how we can implement a set in JavaScript. So a set basically is a data structure where you store some values which are unique. So a value cannot repeat more than once, right? And over that, a set provides you operations like adding, deleting, maybe if you want to union, difference some sets and all that stuff now remember that javascript do come with a set data structure using you can create your set using new set right and you would see that you get all these um, methods already available in javascript so let's just go ahead and extend this data structure to include a little bit of more methods which are like union difference and calculating calculating if a set is a subset or not Right. So traditionally, you would implement a set within an array. But since JavaScript allows us to use um, already existing set data structure, so let's just go ahead and use that. So I'm going to create a class, say set DS, which is a new class. But since we make want to make use of our existing set data structure, which is provided by JavaScript, what we would do is that we would pretty much extend our set. Right. So once we do that, we do have access to all those methods we saw earlier right so if you see a uh, new set here you see all these methods we do have access to all these methods by default right here right so if a user says t dot add t dot clear we do not really need to define it inside our set ds class because it gets it from its parent that is our set class right i'm gonna also fire off my node mon so that we don't have to like uh write every time that what we want to do right so First of all, I'm going to start off by creating a constructor here by accepting some elements. We don't know how many elements the user might pass and we're going to call super with elements. So what's happening here essentially is that if we go ahead and say set is new set DS and if I call it with one, two, three, four, it internally calls new set with an array one, two, three, four, because remember, once you do a dot, 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 elements that is you get it with the um a variable argument elements it gets accepted as an array not as regular arguments right and this is perfectly valid set actually accepts accepts the the only argument given to it as a array of values which you want um the set to contain right so it's perfectly fine with us at the moment so if we take a look here if we console.log our set right here, you're gonna see that we get our nice little set back, which is essentially how a regular set would look like. So let's just go ahead now and create some helper methods which are not available by ES6. So we're gonna create a union method which um, combines two sets and produces a new set, which is obviously, again, having all the set properties. So what I'm gonna do is, first of all, we need a new set so i'm gonna give a new set a name new set and this would be again a set ds which is our data structure here now this set ds we see that it accepts multiple elements right so first of all we need to get all the elements from both the sets right so set 2 would have set 2 dot values remember this is provided by this extended class set right and we also want this sets value so this dot values would be our case right now because we don't want to pass in an array to our new set ds we want to pass in elements so we're going to destructure this as well oops dot 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 there we go right and then finally we can just return this new set so now if we go ahead and create a set to say new set ds three four five six you see that three and four are the overlapping elements here and if I um, do set two dot union set and hit save, we see that we get one, two, three, four, five, six. Similarly for set dot union set two also, we get set DS three, four, five, six, one, two. Well, the order doesn't matter in a set, right? So you see that uh, we are getting our set DS instance again back once we do that. And yeah, this is how you would implement a union method. Now let's just go ahead and take a look at how we would implement a difference method. A difference of two sets is basically um, if you have a set A, A minus B means that all elements which are common in 
A and B are removed from A and then the resulting A set is returned, right? So let's do it. So for example, let me just give you an example real quick. So if A is one, two, three, and B is, let's say, um, two, three, four, five, six, anything, right? So this would be actually common elements are two and three. So this would be one because all the common elements between A and B are removed from A and then the resulting A set is returned. That is just one. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to say, first of all, a new set is new set DS. And then I want to iterate over every value here. So this refers to our current set. That is whatever we would be calling on, right? For each value, if my set two does not has that value only and only then i want to add that value to my new set right and let me just return the set and i'll just explain what this means so if you go ahead and save this and right here instead of union i say difference set two we see that we get one two which is essentially um equal to one two three four minus three four five six equals to one two because three four are the common elements these are removed and the rest is returned so what's happening here you see set dot different set two right here we are creating a new set first then for every value in this set that is one two three four if set two has that value that means if set two does not has that value does one exist in this nope does two exist in this nope does three exist in this? Yes. Does four exist in this? Yes. So we are just returning one and two because we are returning the nopes. One, nope. Two, nope. Three, yep. Four, yep. So we are not returning three and four, right? Finally, we could also have a subset method which just determines if a set is a subset of another set. And what we want to do here is I'm going to first of all assume that, yep, it is a subset, right? And then I'm going to return is subset. So we're going to add some logic in here which would maybe just turn is subset to false somewhere and then pretty much we could return it so i'm gonna say um i'm gonna get the iterator first iterator is basically just um you could think of iterator as a pointer if you're coming from cc plus plus background so which points to a specific location and then you can increment an iterator or move to the next value using some predefined methods so <clears throat> set returns us an iterator, which would be, we would be getting it from this dot values. So we're going to get the initial iterator and we're going to initialize our value to null. And let me just um, make some space here. Let me see how we can do that. Okay. Okay. So yeah, maybe not. Okay. So anyway, we're going to let our iterator to be this dot values and value to be null, which would hold our current value. I want my value to be iterator.next, right? So what this does give us is that this would give us the value, the next iterator, and we want the value of that point. And we pretty much does not really want to do anything after the loop, right? Because the second condition in for loop would actually be evaluated after every iteration. So once our iterator exhaust is exhausted, our value would become undefined. So this loop would automatically break out. So, and if it does not make any sense, uh, just give me a minute, I'll uh, come back to that. But for here, what we want is that we now want to check whether um, the set one, which is our original set, is a subset of set two. So I'm gonna say if set two has our value, then it's not a subset. That means if set two does not has our value, it's not a subset and break. Because what a subset essentially means is that set one, for example, if our set one was one, two, and our set two was uh, one, two, three, four, five, you see that set one is a subset of set two. But if set two, set two right here, does not has any value which is present in set one that then that obviously means that it's not a subset and you could just return out of it or maybe to make it a little bit more cleaner we could just return 
false from here and return true from here because uh, you know you're, you're not gonna get out of here anyway so let's just go ahead and create one two here and I'm gonna say set subset of set two hit save and that is false because one two three four is not a subset of one two but if I switch this set two subset of set it returns me true right so this is our um, another helper method obviously you do have access to all the default uh, methods you have so you have one two three four five you could have set dot add you could have set dot clear right here which are basically just regular methods you have you have keys has for each entries all that stuff plus we have our helper methods like difference and uh, where do we have that uh, union and all that stuff right so this is how you're gonna pretty much implement a basic data structure which is a set data structure in javascript and that's all for this video if you liked it don't forget to subscribe press the bell icon and thank you for watching i'll see you then in the next one